a glorious day. Welcome once again to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. I want to specially welcome you this morning once again to another broadcast, to another engagement in the presence of God. It's a time where we need to pray. It's a time we need to come together and seek the mind of God, the heart of God regarding the days before us. It's a glorious day. Once again, I believe God once again this morning that he will lead us, guide us, he will instruct us, and of course he will manifest his goodness to us. This is the first day of the month of October. What a glorious day. What a beautiful day. It's a day where uh, it's very important to me, particularly right, because of course I'm from Nigeria. Today is uh, the Independence Day of Nigeria. We want to thank God for what God is doing in that nation. I tell you, that nation has been through so many struggles, through so many trials and challenges. All kinds of narratives, all kinds of identities has been, you know, labeled on that nation. And we've seen all kinds of, you know, things. You, we, you, from there, you find the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know. It's a nation that has gone through all kinds of, you know, dealings and, 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 and challenges and, and, you know, if you will, mistakes, and, and of course, all of this can be related to bad leadership, bad leadership. This is a nation that I've not really enjoyed, all right, for a period of time, you know, the, the, the idea of, you know, having good fathers, good, you know, good leaders, and, you know, this morning, when I think of my life, I think of what God is using me to do in this nation of South Africa, I mean, I cannot but to, you know, owe it to, you know, that nation, Na the nation of Nigeria, or I really shaped my life. The, the, you know, the challenges, the, 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 the need, you know, the, all of the things that one went through in that nation, you know, made me today to be what I am. All right? And of course, not like I am perfect, but that sense of resilience, that sense of determination, that sense of, you know, go get it, don't give up, don't look, you don't look back. All right? That is what the nation gave to me. So this morning, I want to celebrate, or uh, you know, at uh, uh, this day with all my friends, families, and loved ones, all right, in Nigeria, celebrating their independent day. One can look back and say, is there anything to celebrate? Is there anything to actually celebrate? Is there anything that worth celebrating? Of course, there is a lot to celebrate. And uh, I want to, you know, dedicate this day as we dedicate, you know, our life, you know, unto God today. I want to really dedicate this day and this moment, you know, to that great nation. That great nation has, has, has birth, has released some of the finest people, you know, in the world. Today, uh, there are so many places that you go, you will see, all right, great Nigerians doing mighty things, great things all over the world, scattered all over the world. And my life, I can tell you, is an example of what that nation has produced. So I want to give thanks to God. If you're watching me this morning, I want you to thank God and, and let's celebrate all right, that great nation. After all, it's our calling and our desire and our mandate. In fact, it's our you know mission all right, to be mission-driven. It's, it's our purpose. It's our assignment to be outward looking in everything that we do. All right? and so as we celebrate other nations, as I'm here in South Africa, you know, carrying on the work of God and reaching other nations, of course i cannot forget you know where the lord has brought me from my root is nigeria it's it's is that you know influence that you know, flair that grace that life that savour and flavor of nigeria that made me what i am today so i owe that nation every you know praise this morning i want to thank god for what god is doing yes things might not really be perfect in fact they are not perfect right now they are not perfect, but guess what? There are perfect people in that nation. There are mature people within that nation. There are people who have really given their heart, who are outward looking, who have not allowed themselves, all right, to be bound by their circumstance and an event. And I tell you, many people, particularly from this part of the world here in South Africa, can learn. You know, from the kind of life, the kind of, you know, a, a quality of men and women that, you know, that nation has produced. I'm talking about Nigeria this morning. All right. There's a lot we can learn from there. And, and you know, we, we need just to go out sometimes and, you know, go beyond what we hear on the media and make our own findings. All right. We may make your own findings. Go to Google. Make, make, make research. You know, get to know about that nation. Because I tell you, there is no way you, you, you can ignore that nation. There, there's no way you can, you know... You know, 
pretend and say, well, that nation does not exist. Well, as long as people are connecting to somebody like me, you know, that is a testimony that all right, that nation has produced quality people. And I want to thank God, all right, for my great nation, Nigeria, this morning. Today they're celebrating, all right, uh, uh, they're, they're, you know, they're independent. Today is the 1st of October. 1st of October, we celebrate independence in Nigeria. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm a proud Nigeria. I want to thank God for that great nation. I want to thank God for what God, you know, has, 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 has done. I know some of the finest people, you know, across the globe that came from Nigeria. I know some of the best ministers of the gospel, some of the best brainies, some of the best scientists, some of the best, you know, uh, 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 academician, you know, they are from Nigeria. So if, we, if we're talking about what God, amen, is doing, because there's no way we can separate what God is doing across the globe. We cannot have a global perspective, amen, and neglect certain, you know, nation. As South Africa is playing a major role in what, amen, the Spirit of God is doing, amen, in this last day, you know, economically, politically, of course, <coughs> excuse me, you know, geographical wise and, and in so many, you know, uh, uh, fields of, of life, science, all of that. So the same with Nigeria all right? and, and some other nation. But there are certain key nations that we cannot ignore. One of them is Nigeria. You want to you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to develop, you want to empower and enhance your life. You need to study that nation. You need to study the people. You need to learn about all right, these people, these Nigerians. OK, don't just look at all right, the the negative aspect every nation has got their own negative aspect is it like is it is like a family all right you know you always have that one that uncle in the family that's you know that sister that brother in the family that is almost like you know you know the, the you know the black sheep you understand but 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 guess what that is that is how life is we can change that i cannot say because all right there are people from nigeria who are you know misrepresenting the nations and the country all right and are not doing you know what they're supposed to do and they're taking advantage i cannot be, because of that deny where i come from even Jesus Christ, amen, is from Nazareth, all right? When we say Jesus, we say Jesus of Nazareth. We link him to Nazareth. So I am, amen, Isaiah Phillips, amen, the prophet of God, amen, from Nigeria. I love that country with all my heart as I love this nation. And this is the kind of a heart God wants us to have for nations. We must not be, we must not be prejudicial in our perspective, in our understanding, all right? Yeah, I know some people, they just want to hear God. You cannot separate God from the nations. God is a God of nations, all, right? All of the things that I have done to be able to you know, bless and benefit people in this nation is because of the root, amen, that I have. Yes, I grew up from, you know, from that nation. It was tough. It was rough. It was difficult. I mean, here, you know, people still complain about electricity here where, you know, they, they, you know, they take light and after, you know, one hour, you know, the light is coming coming back i mean i grew up in a station where in nigeria where for for days you can talk about two three days you don't know if the light is going to turn up guess what people survived people survived we have to improvise we we, we know you know you know sometimes when you find yourself in a, in, a, in a circumstance situation in an environment where you know it's not it's not favorable you learn you see the body learns to create but body learns to adapt and I'm not just talking about adapting for, you know, the wrong. We adapt. We, we become innovative. That's why many Nigerians are innovative, all right? Because they've, they've learned to use their need, their circumstance, all right? Their, their, their lack, all right, to, to create an opportunity for themselves. That's why many Nigerians are very exposed, all right? They're, they're highly, you know, educated, all right? When it comes to, you know, technical, you know, idea, they got, they, they've got that ability. They, I mean... The Nigeria will never tell you I cannot. It will always find when you talk about entrepreneurship, you find them there. So I, I can tell you this this morning, all right, that I can I, I'm not doing what I what I'm doing today by my own power. No, a place shipped me. Just like Amen, Bethlehem shipped Jesus, just like Egypt, Amen, shipped Jesus, just like Nazareth shipped Jesus. All right. We all are shipped, hallelujah, by the environment, by where we were born, by the environment that that you know that that, that you know that we grew from. All right. We can decide to be negative about it, but we can decide to turn the negativity, amen, to positive. You understand? It always takes amen that you know the negative for you to become positive if there are no challenges in life you will not learn amen how to be how to be how to be resolute how to be determined amen how to stand how to become somebody and i have a i believe so much amen that one day one of this day amen we're gonna find a quality you know leaders coming out of nigeria they are there all scattered the problem is amen the the, the political system 
So I'm sharing this this morning, all right, as a dedication to my great nation, Nigeria. This is a this 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 prayer this morning, all right, is dedicated to a nation that has birth. They, they say, "Blessed is the womb, Amen." That that gave you birth. You know, remember Jesus was proclaiming, you know, um, was declaring the message, and a woman declared, "Say, blessed is the womb that brought brought you forth, Amen." Once again, you want to say to me this morning, "Blessed is the nation that produced such a man like Isaiah Phillips." That nation is called Nigeria. We cannot, amen, deny it. I cannot deny it. All right? South Af many South Africans may not like the Nigerians, all right? They may feel threatened, but that's not my own issue. That's not my own issue. My own issue is that God has raised a people. Amen. God, and when God raised a people, he raised a people from among the people. That is a ministry of the priesthood that we're talking about. Amen. A priest is taken from among the people. I am one taken, amen, from Nigeria. I've been, I've been, I've been polished. I've been washed. I've been, I've been refined. Amen. Through that nation, sent to this land, sent to this nation. As, as I am a voice to this nation, you, please always remember, amen, that that voice came from somewhere. All right. There would never be anything that I would do to deny, to de to denounce, and 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 to reject. Amen. The you know the the, the nation. You know the the breast that fed me. That's 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 Nigeria for you. That's Nigeria for you. And I want you to begin to have a different perspective because you cannot love this prophet. All right, and hate the nation that he comes from. If we do, then we are working against the principles of God. Just like when, you know, we're talking about America, we cannot talk about, you know, uh, one person and, and then hate. Uh, no, no, we have, to, we have to look at everything holistically. We have to look at everything holistically. God, amen, uses, you know, our environment to shape, amen, to shape his plans, to shape his purpose, to shape his, amen, his counsel, amen, for, for our lives and through our life. So I want you to understand this morning when you, when, in fact, some of you, if you have, if God ever blesses you, you, you travel to Nigeria, you'll be sure shocked you'll be surprised with the with the sense of resilience with the sense of life with the joy of the people you know with the you know they're, they're, they're very loud nigerians are very you know you, you hardly find them sad they will that, that's why they can resist that's why you know for 60 years they can take all the things that they've taken because you, you see something is terrible something is going you know something that ought to you know crush them something that will cause many people in in, in other countries to go hang themselves and nigeria will turn it around and laugh over it and, 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 and make it a jest, you know, and make it a joke, you know, understand? It plays, it plays over everything. And at the end of the day, he lives longer. So sometimes people think, all right, maybe this, these people here, they're not serious. They're, they're, some of them, they're some of the most serious people I've ever met on earth. I've, 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 I mean, I've connected with several people from different parts of the world. And I've seen how Nigerians have their values, their perspective, their understanding about, about life is totally different. That's why anything you do in Nigeria, amen, good or bad, succeed. <laughs> it succeed because the environment, all right, is a community environment. It's an environment that makes you, you know, want to get up. You know, when I came here, I got all kinds of cultural shock because, you know, I still find people 6 o'clock, they're still sleeping. 7 o'clock, they're still snoring. Not in Nigeria. In Nigeria, 4 a.m., people are awake. You know, 5. I'm talking about youth. I'm not talking about just old people. I'm talking about youth. You see them alive, all right? In their workplace, you see the, the, the cobbler, the guy fixing that shoe. He's there fixing the shoe. The one making the dress. You know, she's there. He's there making the dress. You know, these are people that want to walk. They walk with their hand. They don't wait on the government. Like I said, in Nigeria, you don't have something like, you know, you know, you just walk into a bank and somebody gives you, you know, some loans to go do X, Y, Z. No, no, you have to work for it. You have to, you have to sweat for it. You know, you know, here you find people, you know, walking, you know, by 11, they're already taking a break. They take smoke break, then they take coffee break, then they take meal break, all kinds of break. By the time you know it, the time is gone. The job is not, the job is not done. Sometimes when I look at people, the way they do things, I ask myself, are these people actually working? Because in Nigeria, that is not accepted. What am I saying? I'm saying that we can learn from other people. You know, we, 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 in this part of the world, you know, we have this sense of entitlement. Guess what? That is why things are the way they are right now. And that's why the government is trying to, to bail everybody out. You know, everybody basically live on some kind of, you know, uh, 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 you know, stipends. You know, it's not like that for where I come from. That may not be good, but you see, that itself train the people. Train the people. Build the people. That's why you find some of the best aeronautic engineers from Nigeria. 
Some of the best scientists are from Nigeria. Some of the best poets in the world, all right? <laughs> you know, no, no, Nobel Peace uh, Laureate, you know, Wale Shoyinka from Nigeria. I'm, t I'm telling you, some of the best, you know, f physicists from Nigeria. So, so you know, the narrative sometimes that we get from, you know, the media, and that's what media does. Media sells what they want to sell. They, they sell you know, a story that sells. So when they say that nation is terrible, those people are drug pushers. Those people, you know, are, you know, are human traffickers. Those people, you know, because that's the latest one I'm here in South Africa. Oh, no, Nigerians are trafficking human. I'm not saying they're not doing that, but you cannot label trafficking on one country. You cannot label, you know, drug pushing on, on Nigerians. You cannot label, you know, a crime on one country. Look at the number of people that left this country, you know, uh, 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 was it two years ago, three years ago when the xenophobia. Yes, a lot of Nigerians left. But guess what? I can show you those people are not suffering <clears throat> because they know how to walk. So what I'm, what I'm saying, the reason why I can do what I'm doing today, the reason why I can be up early in the morning, the reason why I can be jostling so many things is because that nation built me. And this is something that South Africa needs to learn because if we want to catch up with what is going on, if we want to catch up with what they call amen, the fourth in, 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 in the industrialization, the fourth economy, if we want to catch up, then we have to change attitudes. Our attitude to ourselves, our attitude to other people, the way we look at people, the way we treat them. All right? It's not just about we having infrastructure. Infrastructure all right, is something that can be built today and can be destroyed tomorrow. But guess what? If we don't have the right attitude, if we don't have the right, you know, perspective, the right outlook, the right, you know, spiritual understanding and the right, you know, uh, 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 you know, values and philosophy to life, to people. Those infrastructure, have you noticed that whenever there is a toy toy, people are protesting. The same infrastructure, infrastructures that are built to help people to, grow, you know, to develop the, the people use their own hand to destroy it. Then the government, of course, will have to fix it again. But who is paying for it? The people are paying for it. It's not the government. Government doesn't have money. The government, amen, are just custodians of the of the you know of the tax of the of the of the money of the people. So at the end of the day, it is you and I that pay for that you know you know destruction. So we have to begin to think outside the box. But the point this morning is, I'm just trying to challenge you that, you know, sometimes we can keep our mind, our eyes, you know, locked up in our own little environment and not see, and not see a bigger picture, and not see the outside, and not see what's going on in the world. And sometimes, you know, we have this, you know, self-delusion, the fact that foreigners come to in a particular place, you understand? And we, 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 we use that idea that, well, they're coming to us, and therefore we are the one that need them i mean that's the greatest life that you know the enemy can give to us and we buy it you've got to ask yourself where are these people coming from what is moving them to come what why why are they living what do they have what have they brought you know when people come to the country the first thing the government asks is what money are they coming with of course they also ask what skill are they coming with now the question i want to ask is where are those skills being used there are many skillful foreigners in this country Use them to develop the local community, the local economy. But you see, they 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 just you know you know go into the into the you know into oblivion. You know we we lose them because what the government are looking for basically is just money. Somebody may not really appreciate what I'm saying this morning, but I really don't care. I'm a voice. I'm a prophet. I don't speak to suit people. I don't sp speak what people want to hear. I speak what God is saying, what God will have me say, what I know will benefit. Amen. The, 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 the purpose of the, of the gospel, amen, is to advance the kingdom. And the kingdom must be advanced in every sphere of life, in every area of life. Amen. Listen to this. If South Africa ever get blessed and Malawi is suffering or Zimbabwe is suffering, South Africa can never sleep well. You, you only be sleeping with one eye. That is a that's a, that's an African proverbs. If you want to define your prosperity, make sure your neighbors are secure. Make sure your neighbors, amen, are secure and blessed. So we have to begin to think outside the box. We have to begin to think beyond our show. We have to begin to think be beyond our own identity, our own skin, our own, you know, little, you know, we've got to see something bigger than us. We have to learn to open our hands.
We have to learn to open our hearts. We have to learn. You see, if I don't open my own heart, I won't be in this country. Like I always tell people, I'm not an ec economic migrant. I didn't come to South Africa to look for, me, for money. I didn't come to South Africa to look for work. I didn't even come to South Africa, amen, to start a church. I came to empower this nation. I came because God sent me here. I came because, amen, a voice said to me, South Africa needs engineers. You see, people are sleeping. They don't even know that there's a cry going out. There's a cry going out. That cry could not allow me to sleep. I mean, that cry made me to, to, to leave behind everything that I've ever worked for in my life. Everything I've ever worked for in my life. And somebody see you under, they say he says a bloody Nigerian. This foreigners. They have no regard. They have no respect. But we pray that God this day will touch, you know, Nigerians and will touch, you know, Africa. Because that's my prayer. That's my desire. That God will begin to give us a new, a new sense of leaders who can see beyond themselves. Who can see beyond their own pocket. Who can see beyond their own, you know, their, their own little empire. And begin to see the investment and begin to see the capital in the people and invest in them. It's my prayer. It is my desire. Because I tell you, one day, one day, South Africa will be, will be pursuing, will, will be longing, will be looking for Nigerian visa. And I tell you, by the way, there are a lot of South Africans in Nigeria. <laughs> a lot of South Africans. Now, that's the other side that people don't talk about. And who are these South Africans? The people who understand the opportunities in Nigeria. Do you know that MTN, all right? MTN, of course, is a South African company. But guess what? What, what made MTN become one of the biggest com you know, a, a company in Africa? Nigeria. Nigeria, the same thing with Vodacom. Many of these big companies, they are all there in Nigeria. They are all there in Nigeria. But you don't hear about that. You don't hear about that. Guess what? All your Itris, all your, you know, your, your, your Nandos, your, you know, your KFC, they're all in Nigeria. That's why I say sometimes you need to make your own findings. Because it's, it's important that you know where I'm coming from, you know, as, a, as an individual. Not just as a spiritual person. Amen. Every spirituality has a root in the earth. <laughs> Every Jesus Christ could not, could not be thrown down from heaven. He had to be born amen, into a place. He had to come through a place. Amen. He was born in Bethlehem. Amen. When we refer to him, we refer to him as Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Because when, when his parents were coming back from Egypt, the Lord said they must go to, to, to Nazareth. So you cannot amen, deny where you come from. I cannot, I cannot distinguish, excuse me, I cannot remove amen, my, my spiritual identity from my, from my you know, geographical roots. No, I cannot. I love, I love that nation. I love my country as much as I love this nation. Because this is a nation God has put in my heart as a burden. As much as I can lay down my life for this nation, I can lay down my life for this nation. So I can also lay down my life for my nation. Because I am what I am today because that nation shaped me. I still have sis sisters, siblings. I still have a mother alive. I still have a brother. Amen. I still have friends. I still have, you know, you know uh, ministry colleagues. I still have, you know, people in Nigeria. I st I st I st and, and of course, I miss the food the most. <laughs> I miss the food. You understand? But guess what? I love this nation. It cannot be better, amen, than we're having it. I love this nation. Can, can somebody love two nations, you know, with the way I love? Yes. Because I understand where I came from. But I also understand, amen, where I've been sent to. So this morning, I want you to rejoice with me. I want us to celebrate, amen, that great nation, that great giant, you know, Nigeria. Yes. It's a nation of diversities. You find people that are loud there and then you find the very quiet. You find those that are humble and you find those where you talk about really making noise. They are there. You find, or are, you, 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 in fact, there are certain places you go. You find yourself in Nigeria. You know, not, it was a few months ago. I was just checking on Google, you know, because of course I've not been there for a long time. So I was just checking and checking, you know, trends and new things. I mean, this place has so developed that there are certain places in Nigeria that it just looks like an America. I thought, I said, is this Nigeria? They say, yes. They said, it's been long. You left Nigeria. So, you see, you still find poverty there, but you still find wealth. Some of the wealthiest people in this world, they are in Nigeria. 
You know about Dangote. I mean, this is a man who, who grew up, you know, building, building an empire of industries. So, what are we talking about? Let's begin to think outside the box. Let's begin to see, amen, what God is doing beyond the definition of media. Let's make our own research. You know, before I came to this nation, I made a lot of research. I made a lot of findings. You know, I, I, I had to find, you know, who, who are South Africans? You know, what are, they, what, what, what are their likes and dislikes? Amen. So many things I had to find out. You, can't, you cannot be interested in the purposes of God, amen, and, and, and not be interested in people. You know, I used, to, I used to say to you, there are two things, two major things you must learn in life. Two things you need to know in life. You need to know God and you need to know people. You need to know God and you need to know people. Don't just know people on the face value. Don't just see them and decide. That is why you know, racism is, is very rife in South Africa. You know, when you look at people, you look at their skin and you decide. You know, there was a time I had some issue on, with some people on, the, you know, on, on this you know, uh, 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 community you know, platform here in, in Franjouk. And one of the ladies, she could not but to, uh, had to open her mouth to say, you know, you, you speak so much. You speak intelligently. Maybe you are even using this thing to try to capture people. I, can't, I cannot believe that you are writing the things that you are writing. You see, that is the height of, of you, know, uh, 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 you know, prejudice. That you can look at somebody and define and determine what the person has the ability to do or not to do. And that's something that is so general, particularly among the whites, I'm sorry to say. That it's easy to look at people and conclude. It's easy to look at a country and conclude. It's easy all right, to, 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 to look at a nation and just conclude. You know, like I said, I had to make my own finding before I came to South Africa. One of the things that I was told from the media is that out of every, out of every five South Africans, Two of them has got AIDS. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, Lord, do you really want me to go marry in that nation? So there's every likelihood that the person I'll be marrying may have AIDS, HIV. That is what is in the media. But that's not the reality. Are you getting the point that I'm trying to make? So even the media itself, all right, can, can project and, and can, can promote this false narrative, this, you know, prejudicial, you know, narrative. And then people buy it because most people, you know, just consume what they hear from the media. You know, it took me close to about 12 years for people to begin to believe and accept that, you know, I'm a different minister that this guy doesn't have any ulterior motive. Till today, I'm sure some people are still looking. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's got, maybe, maybe. They will wait until they die. Because I am what I am by the grace of God. So, <laughs> what are you going to do? If you have to be waiting for people to, you know, to, 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 to accept you. If you have to be, you know, seeking, you know, no. Just be who you are. This is who I am. My wife will tell you this is who I am. It took a while for ourselves to understand, to accept the way I am. I'm just me. <laughs> I don't, I mean, a family thought, oh, this guy must, he's, he's, a, he's a Nigerian. Excuse me? Not all Nigerians are, are bad people. In fact, the bad ones in Nigeria are this very small one. You're talking of a nation of 200 million people. And then somebody just wake up and throw a word. Nigerians are drug pushers. Nigerians are, you know, are, 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 you know, you know, are swindlers. Nigerians are, you know, are, are the one committing the most crime in this nation. I love some, you know, an interview that was made some not too long ago, and this woman was proven with statistics. So many of the crimes taking place in South Africa. Our homegrown, you know, uh, crime. It's, it's not committed by foreigners. But guess what? If there is a theft, you know, in the, you know, in in the in in the in the train, they, they say that is the foreigners. They say it's the Zimbabweans. They say it's the South Africans. Excuse me, the Nigerians. If you know, if there's trafficking, you know, and and I understand. Yes, there are there are there are Nigerians who are doing trafficking. But guess what? It takes two to tango. 
if there are Nigerians doing trafficking, carrying drugs, the government know them. The, the, you know, the, the law, the, you know, the law enforcement officers, they know them. They're encouraging them. Arrest them. Put them to jail. Lock them up. But don't make it difficult for other, other you know, uh, citizens. Don't, don't, don't paint it so that when you're walking on the street, you find it difficult to say I'm in Nigeria because, you know, it's there on the headline. Nigerians are drug pushers. That's a, that's a nation today that has raised some of the best leaders. Some of the most effective, you know, prophets, apostles that I've ever known globally. They're here from Nigeria. So what am I doing? I'm just trying to expand your mind. You that are following me, I want to expand your mind. I want, I want you to go make your own finding, make your own research. All right, go into the, you know on the internet, make make research. Go to Google, make research. Think the world has changed, and we need to wake up. These are all part of the things that we're talking about. All right, we cannot be sleeping in the days where everybody's waking up. Amen. It's a new day. They, everybody's waking up. The nations are waking up again. All right. We cannot be sleeping. We have to wake up also and begin to realize. I'm hoping. I mean, imagine God blesses me. I want to take some of you to, 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 to just visit that country. You know, have, have a feel of the life there. The vibe. A nation that never sleeps. People are walking 24-7. And of course, you know, they know how to entertain themselves also. And yet you also find them very spiritual. And of course you find, amen, the other ones, the other side, amen, that are fake. Yes, like I said, you find this in every part of the world. I mean, they did a documentary some time ago in Al Jazeera about poverty in America. You will never believe that there's so much poverty in America, yet when they talk about America is like, is, you know, is the dreamland, the American dream. Yet there is abject poverty that some people, amen, living in, you know, some ghetto, all right, are far better than some of these people in America. It all depends on what, amen, the media are projecting. That's why you've got to go beyond what media say. You've got to go beyond what people are saying, what your friends are saying, what the neighbors are saying, you know. I can thank God today that nobody where I live can point at me and say, ah, this man, no. If there's anything they're going to challenge me for is that he's too righteous, he's too good. He says it the way it is, yes. That's, I'm not going to say behind you, I'm going to say it to your face. I'm gonna, if you do something wrong, I'm going to tell it to your face. Now, they may challenge me for that. They may not like me for that. But guess what? Some people even say I'm too forward. You know, I'm too forward. Because I'm not going to put the thing behind. It's just who I am. A nation of two, 200 million people cannot be reduced to, you know, a common thief, to a drug pusher. This day, I, I declare that the nation of Nigeria is a nation that is rising up. As Nigeria today celebrates, you know, are independent. May it truly be a day of independence for that nation. May it be a day where people truly begin to wake up. May it be a day where God will begin to change guards at the gate because there is so much opportunity for Africa, for, you know, for the world in Nigeria. Like I said today, my, my concept of life and ministry was not made by Americans. No, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't develop my prophetic ministry based on what I heard somebody said. In, no, it was from Nigeria. <laughs> I'm a local born. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I've become an international voice. That's the truth. Today we've got people following us from different parts of the world. From I'm telling you, if I show you some of the stacks of the people listening to you know, our broadcast, this broadcast that I'm making right now, that's why I'm very conscious of what I'm saying. I want people to know. I want people to hear the things that we're talking about. All right? I'm flagging Nigeria today because today is the first, the first of October. This is Independence Day in Nigeria. And I'm flagging this thing that the blessings of God is upon that land, regardless of the current narrative, regardless of, amen, of the political state of that country, of that nation. That nation, amen, is a gift to Africa, is a gift to the world. Because some of the people that are coming out of that nation have been a blessing, amen, to our, our generation. And it will, continue to be, it will continue to be so. If we continue to maintain the path, we will not focus, amen, on the bad ones. We will continue to focus on the good ones and amplify the good ones. And continue to raise, amen, the bar and continue to raise the standard. And continue to raise, amen, the platform of God's prophetic counsel for that nation. Because I know this is just the beginning. 
our children and our children's children, amen, will have to see and, and enjoy the blessings of God from that nation. As they are going to, amen, be a blessing to, you know, to the rest of the world. But first they have to be a blessing to where they come from. So as my life has become a blessing to the nations of the world, I want to, I want to give back to that nation this morning and say, Nigeria, I appreciate what you have done in my life. We may not have good leaders. We may not have good political leaders. But God will change them. God will remove them. In due time, God will remove them and give us a true leader that represents the values of Nigeria. That represents the aspiration of you know, an ordinary Nigeria. Yes, because there is nothing you take to Nigeria that you will not be able to sell. There is no idea that you have that you put down that somebody will not run with. Do you know that there are, there are laptops, there are, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, tablets that are made from Nigeria? Do you know that Nigerians are also making their phones? Do you know that there are vehicles, vehicles being made? I'm not talking about being assembled. I'm talking about being manufactured from Nigeria. You can Google it. There is a guy called Innocent, the Innocent, Innocent Vehicle. Go Google it. Innocent. Innocent Vehicle from Nigeria. Go Google it. Sport cars, Porsche cars, luxurious cars from Nigeria. You don't see that in the media. I'm not talking about assembling them. No, no, no. I'm not talking about car manufacture somebody. You come, manu no, no, no. Made in Nigeria. Four by fours made in Nigeria. Friends, it's a day where we have to open our eyes. You know, I pray that you will begin to think outside the box. You begin to see what God is doing. Listen, all of the things that I've been declaring and pouring into your life is because God wants to take it. There's a reason why you're connected to me if you're connected to me. If you're truly connected to me. Not just one, all right, you're watching, you know. And there are people who watch you, they like to follow you, but they're not connected. But if you're truly connected to me, it's because there's something special about your life. You cannot be connected to somebody like me without a, you know, a, a sense of uniqueness in your life, without something special. I, I always tell people, if you're following me, and, you, and if, you've, if you've been able to follow me for two, three, four years, you, see, you must be special. <laughs> you must, you, there must be a special hand of God in your life. Yes, be, because you know, God will use me to, you know, I will put you down, take you up, you know, uh, perfect all the things that needs to be perfected. You'll get it raw. You can't get it more raw than this. You can't get the message, amen, more, 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 more sharp than this. It's a two-edged sword. No holes bad. <laughs> this is a place where you get it raw. You get it life, amen, because I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose than to give you the truth. I don't want to gain the world, amen, and lose my soul because, you know, no, I want to tell you the truth. I want you to be able to look back and say, that man helped me to change my life. And I thank God for many lives that we have changed. Like I said, not because I did it all, I had it all. No, a nation shaped me. An environment formed me. I came out from a womb. That womb is called Nigeria. All right? I can stand anywhere today and defend that nation. All right? Just like we have corruption here, we've got corruption there. <laughs> Understand? But we cannot say because of the corruption, all right, everybody must be painted, amen, corrupt. No, I'm not corrupt. I'm not corrupt. I don't take bribe. I've never taken bribe in my life. I have never taken a bribe in my life. That's a bold statement, but that's the truth. That's the truth. I might have committed other sin. But the things that most Nigerians, you know, you know, are, 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 are labeled with, I've never done any of those things. I've never done drugs in my life. I've never seen, you know, a cocaine, you know, on a close, you know, proximity. I don't know how it looks like. You know. But guess what? I've helped a lot of people. We'll continue to do what we need to do. We'll continue to proclaim. My mouth, amen, is to speak the blessings of God. And you cannot be speaking the blessings of God and you have, you know, a bad ulterior motive, you know, uh, against people. No, we cannot do that. We cannot do that. We will continue to raise the bar. 
I hope that one of these days God will grant us grace and, you know, and, and resource that we all can travel to Nigeria and just go see, amen, that nation. Just go look at, I mean, the vibe in Lagos is totally different from the vibe in Abuja. I mean, let me tell you something. For you to know how big Nigeria is, the, 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 the capital of Nigeria is Abuja. I've never been to Abuja. That's to tell you how big that nation is. Just two, just two, two cities in Nigeria, you combine just two cities. You have, I think, 32, 32 states in Nigeria. 32 states. If you combine two states in Nigeria, that is the entire South Africa. I'm just giving you perspective. If you take Lagos and Ibadan, you combine them together, that is the whole South Africa for you. <laughs> and you've got 32. Come on. And we want to reduce that nation to, you know, we, something must be wrong the way we think. We, as believers, we have to begin to change. And I'm not just limiting this to you know, South Africans. This is something that, is, that we need to change globally. There's a reason why people move from one point to another. You know, the issues of immigration, we have to deal with it. But we cannot deal with it by labeling everybody as criminals. As, you know, as you know, poor people. You can be poor, but your mind amen, is intelligent. Yes. I mean, I went through poverty, but my mind was not poor. I knew what to do. I just needed the help. Just like some of us today, you understand? If the government would do the right thing and really begin to invest and begin to invest in people, guess what? You will find yourself doing things because what, you see, listen, poverty is the state of the mind. Wealth is the state of the mind. It's not the money you have in, the, in, in some account. No, it's not. You may not have money, but you have an idea, you've got something that you want to do. Now, that's where Nigerians di are, di are different. You see, when a Nigerian have an idea, they can sell that idea to their brother, to somebody, say, this is what I want to do. Particularly among the Igbos that people always call, you know, the drug pushers. The Igbos are some of the most powerful entrepreneurs I've ever met. The Igbos. Like I told you, this car that is made in Nigeria is from, you know, the, 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 the you know, eastern part of Nigeria. These people are highly, highly intelligent. Highly intelligent. Nigeria is, is, a, is a nation of diversity. Diversity. Diversity of culture. Diversity of, of idea. Diversity of, of, you know, perspective and, and leadership. Make your own research. What am I doing? This is mission, mission 101. You, you cannot be a Christian amen, and, not have a and not have a desire for the nations. You cannot be praying for nations and not, and not be interested in the nation. No, part of prayer amen, is find out. Amen, if you're praying for Brazil, you've got to know the Brazilians. If you're praying for Americans, you've got to know what's going on in America. Come on. I'm very, I'm very interested in the nation of America. Not because I want to go to America. I never desire to go to America. I've never, and I don't want to go to America. But guess what? I, I want that nation to succeed because I know whatever happens in America impacts the rest of the world. It's only a matter of time. Did you see the, 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 the just concluded uh, uh, debate between uh, Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump? That is an image of the present state of America. And that should call for a concern for every, for every Christian across the globe. We all should be praying for America because that nation is so sharply, sharply divided. Sharply divided. That wasn't a debate that you know, Donald Trump and you know, Joe Biden had. I mean that they were calling themselves names. But that is to tell us something. And some nations right now, some places, they're happy. You know, they're happy because, you know, a nation begins to collapse when there is what? When there is a, a division from within. They say a nation begins to lose, amen, its strength, amen, once there is what? A division from the inside. When, you, when a nation implodes, it's only a matter of time before it explodes. So we have to pray for you know America as we are praying, all right, that things will begin to happen here in South Africa, that the law, amen, once again will begin to rise up, amen, and clamp down on, on criminality because what has brought South Africa to where we are today is criminality. Criminality, amen, in, 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 in politics among amen, those amen that have been given the, the you know the 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 the, 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 the responsibility of stewardship. We, we have to, you see, if, you, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, amen, you should have kingdom perspective, meaning that heaven comes first before your nation. 
That's what it means to be kingdom. The, the purposes of God, the counsels of God comes first before your nation. I'm not, I'm not a nationalist, but I love my country. Amen. As much as I love this nation, as much, as much as I love every other nation, there is no nation in the world that I hate. I don't hate no nation. People may, you know, the, 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 the political, you know, uh, uh, image of that nation may be terrible, may be antichrist, but there are people in that nation that God died for. In fact, Jesus died for the people. People, God died for, amen, the Iranians. The government, amen, of Iran, amen, may, 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 be, may, be, may hate Israel, may, may want to bomb God knows what. But guess what? There are Christians in Iran. There are Christians in Iraq. There are Christians in Kuwait. There are Christians in Saudi Arabia. Do you know I have people following me from some of these countries? But you see, it's easy to paint them and say Islamic country, Islamic nation. We don't do that. We, in this 21st century, we cannot flow with what the media all right, wants, us to, wants us to say. We cannot flow with amen, the narrative of the media. No, we have to look at things through the lens view of the kingdom. You see, when you're kingdom, you start speaking like me. I condemn every sin, every, every ungodliness that is done in Nigeria. But I will not amen, condemn Nigerians. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I cannot do that. I cannot say, amen, most Nigerians are, are criminals. Like, neither can I say most South Africans, you know, are lazy people. No, I can't say that. If I say that, then I'll be out of order. Are there lazy people in South Africa? Yes, a lot of them. Are there criminals in Nigeria? Yes, a lot of them. But you cannot, amen, major, amen, on the, on the, on the negative. You have to, even if there's one person. What did God said? He said, if I find a man 10 in the land, he said, for 10 sake, I will not destroy the land. That should be our perspective to kingdom. You see, I wasn't planning to say things like this, but God wants us to begin to think mission. Mission means we begin to think beyond our, our brothers. We begin to think beyond, our, like I said, if South Africa ever thinks that all right, they are just going to be secure in their own wealth, in their own idea, in their own sense of you know, uh, 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 prosperity, and you don't think of what's going on in Zimbabwe, and not just play political lip service, that you are not engaging, all right? that you're not thinking of what's going on amen, in your in, among your neighbors. Listen to this. When trouble comes, they will, they will also turn their face away. We all need each other. The nations need, it, just like Nigerians, we need Ghanaians. Ghanaians, amen, need Nigerians. You understand? Just like Nigerians, we need, you know, Bene Republic. The Bene Republic, amen, Cotonou, we need, amen, Nigerians. We all need each other. We all need to connect. That's, that should be the mindset. Never you think, amen, you're an island to yourself. Never you think you can, listen to this. God will always send people across your path. But if you don't have, amen, honor and respect for people, you can walk past your blessing. You can walk, you can ignore your own blessing and not, amen, see it. I've seen that in my life. That just my attitude to people elevated me. That's why I love that caption I put some time ago on my timeline. Listen to this. You don't hire people for skill. You hire them for attitude. It's the same principle in, in, in life. Don't look at people because, oh, they've got skill. Don't look at people because they look, wow, they look trendy, they look, no. All of that can be a show. You relate to people because of their attitude. You marry for attitude. Don't marry beauty. Beauty will fade away. Ninety percent of the battles in homes, all right, are attitude-based. The man doesn't have a good attitude. The woman doesn't have a good attitude. But she's pretty. But he's got money. Who cares about all of that? Because what will give you rest? It's not how they look. It's their attitude. It's their sense of honor, respect, dignity. It's their sense of care. It's their sense of understanding. When people don't have all of that, listen, you can employ people who are very skillful, but have Bad attitude. Now that is something you get from Nigerians. They're people of honor. They, they, they will respect you. 
You see, you see, you see a, you know, a man who very, you know, well made. He will still be saying yes, sir. Yes, sir to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y yes, sir. A Nigerian, they, they would do anything. In Nigeria, you find, you find well-grown, well-built people into, into in the work of, you know, a, a, a driver. They drive you. You know, that's how most Nigerians are. They've got their own personal drivers. And you see this elderly man, he's still saying yes sir to this small, you know, yes sir. Because he, he's showing honor and respect. And you'll be surprised where that honor will take that man. But here, no, people will look at you down. They, they will even, I mean, you, you are the one employing the person, but the, you, the, the person you're employing, amen, is talking down on you just because the law gives them certain rights. That's why people don't move up. That's why people don't get promoted. Because listen to this, it's not the government that's going to promote you, it's your boss. And if you're not good to your boss, you don't show the right attitude, you, you remain where you are. See, they don't teach all of this. We have to open our eyes. We have to begin to see beyond the boundaries. We've got to begin to see beyond our sense of entitlement. Humble yourself. This is a nation that needs humility. And I, you know what I always say about this concept of pride. People who exhibit pride is because they are insecure. When you see people ex express pride, check. They're broken. They're insecure. And that's why they're doing what they're doing. You know, one of the reason why, let me say this, I can be bold enough as a prophet to say this. You know why entertainment, all right, is one of the biggest business in, in South Africa? Because people are insecure, because people are broken. So you always need something. You always need an entertainment to keep them, to keep them going. Remove that entertainment, they collapse. That's why sport is a big business in, in, in Nigeria, excuse me, here in South Africa. Of course, across the world, but particularly here in South Africa. There are things that we need to deal with. I'm not saying people should not do sport and invest, but I'm saying all of those issues of sport and entertainment and, you know, this idol and that, you know, fashion and all of that. If you look behind all of that, you will find broken people. Many of the people, you know, who are into, you know, the, 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 the fashion business, they are all broken people. They are not whole. You cannot bring wholeness to people if you yourself are broken. Because by the time you get home, you will have to remove all of those marks, all of those images, all of those things. And then you, you, you are there facing your own self, looking at yourself at the mirror. That is the image of this nation. And that's why people take advantage of them. That's why foreigners come and take advantage of this country. Because they know the nation is a broken nation. But the nation is portraying this idea of... I am, I am, I am, I am okay. I am well built. I have what it takes. But you know it's not true. You know it's not true. You need to be healed. South Africa still needs to be healed. I keep saying, I've been saying it for some years. This nation needs to be healed. But we keep, we keep lying to ourselves. We keep, we keep, you know, every day. You know, South, South Africa, South African story is like the image, is like the story of Michael Jackson. Oh, Jesus, help me. The, the story of this nation is like that of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, right from his youth, you know, when they were still Jackson 5. I mean, they, they, they never understood. They never had anything called, you know, growing up, you know, as, 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 as a normal child will grow up. No, they grew up because they got talent, because they've got, you know, uh, uh, this grace, this gift to sing. And before you know it, they were on stage. A chunky part of their life was taken from them. But they had money. Michael Jackson had money. He had money. He had, he had, he had estate. He had all of this. He had, he had everything that you... But guess what? He was a broken man. And guess what? The media and the world system, they like to invest in broken people. Not for you to get healed, but for you to entertain them. For you to entertain them. Until you finally, until you finally breathe your last breath. And I pray that will not be the end of... And that's why God is sending prophets to this nation. True prophets. Prophets that will not rape the lamb, but will tell... You know, if you go to the doctor, be ready, amen, for the brutal truth. Be ready for the truth. Because the, the doctor will tell you, you're sick. You need to be fixed. 
And this is how it's going to take. You have to take this tablet. You have to do this exercise. All right. If part of your problem is, amen, you're too weighty. You, oh, but I don't like to, no, no. They, they put you on a strict diet and they tell you the things you must do if you want your life. The question is, do, we, do you really want your life? The South Africa wants a life. Are we, do we want to continue to pretend to be what we are not? Do we want to be, you know, rubbing shoulder with people that we know that, amen, <laughs> we shouldn't be found among them? You see, when, when we suffer insecurity, we want to do things just for people to accept us, to, to love us, you know, and we're using what we have. Is that the concept of the prostitute? You use what you have, all right, to, you know, to get what you want, not what you need. That's the truth, right? Yeah. I'm talking about nations this morning. As I'm dealing with my own nation, Nigeria. Celebrating, hallelujah, this glorious day. This first day of the month of October. It's, a, it's an independent day, Nigeria. But God is using that to speak to us about our own life, our nation. And of course, this man that has been a blessing to this nation. I am one made from Nigeria. Grew up. In northern Nigeria, finally came down to you know southern Nigeria, settled down in in Lagos, you know was born in in Ibadan. I grew up in a place called Jos Plateau State, very cold, just like here in South Africa. That's the coldest place in Nigeria, Jos Plateau. Guess what? Fifty percent of the people you find in Jos are white people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that would be a shocker to some people. You mean you've got white people in Nigeria? Of course. A lot of them. A lot of them. So, so you, you've got to understand, God, God has prepared me. All of the things that I'm doing. Sometimes when I look back at my life, I see, I see, I see the thrill. I see, you know, the, the root, the plan. I, I just see, it is, you know, it's a master plan. And today here I am. The weather, everything God had prepared me. So I, I give thanks to God. So I want to thank God for that nation. I want to thank God for the kind of life, for the kind of, you know, you know uh, 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 wisdom, understanding he's given to me. It's not easy. Sometimes you feel overwhelmed. But guess what? God has kept one alive. That today I can, I can share this with you. Can you see? This is, this is, this is, this is truth. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to, I know, we'll say the way it is. Even if it's one person that will get what I've said this morning, then I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. You see, that is my perspective to life. When I preach, I, I, I'm preaching to everybody, but I know it's not everybody's going to get a message. Maybe it's just one person that God needs. Yes. Yes. And once you reach that one person, your job is done. Your job is done. That's why you should never hold back. You should never, I've learned that from the prophetic. Never hold back. You know, not too long ago, I was, I was having a conversation in my mind as the Spirit of God woke me up, was telling me something. Something that, you know, basically, you know, uh, goes against my kind of principle. Because it has to do with money. And I, and I was struggling with that thing. I was struggling. I said, I'm not going to tell this person. I'm not going to tell this person. No, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Because I don't want people to, you know, always connect me to, to, to money. No, no, no. I'm not. And I was, I was coming in the morning, you know, to have a, you know, my broadcast. As I stepped out, you know, at the door, the Holy Spirit reminded me again. You need to tell this person to do this. So I finally finished later in the afternoon. And I sent a message to this lady. I said, this is what, you know, I picked in my spirit. Please, this is what the Lord will have you do. Give the gift. Send it to whoever, but this is just, this, this person sent me a message by saying, you know, prophet, I was thinking about this yesterday night. Now, imagine if I have to keep that. I was struggling with it because I didn't want this person to think maybe I'm asking for money, which of course is not what I'm doing, but I know I have, I have heard God. <laughs> just give the word. See, when we continue, continue to think about what people would think, what people would think, particularly in the prophetic, <laughs> you're, create, you're creating a big problem because you don't know. You see, God never speaks a word that makes sense to you. Just like the things I've said this morning. 
It may not make a lot of sense to certain people, but guess what? It may just be one or two person that gets it and says, wow, I needed to hear that. That's it. So when this person said to me, you know, you just confirmed what I was thinking about yesterday. I said, Lord, I repent. I repent. And, it's, and that's just it. That's called the sin of omission. Now, because I don't want people to, you know, to, to look at me or to think, no, it's not about you. Your heart must always be pure before the Lord. The things that I've said this morning, amen, I've come from a pure heart. I love my nation. I love my country. I'm a, I'm, I'm a lover of Nigeria. I love Nigeria. I love that nation. All, right? All of the things that I'm doing today is because that nation shaped me. I mean, you are benefit, benefiting from a people that were my prophetic guinea pigs. I call them my prophetic guinea pigs. Yes, because growing up with young people who, who just began life, you know, some of them, some of the people that I trained, raised up, you know, they were still in, in secondary school, you know, you know, they were still growing up. Many of them finished university today. Many of them have married with children. Some of them are even pastor's wives. Some of them are into ministry. Some of them have started churches. You know, yes, are you getting the point? But back in those days, they were the people that I was using to prophesy upon their life, you know. <laughs> but today, the, pro the, the ministry, the prophet has grown as mature. But that came from somewhere. That's what I'm talking about. That came from somewhere. That's somewhere you cannot deny it. You're blessed today because there were people that God used to prepare me, amen, to enhance your life. That is the divine connections of the spirit. So you're even connected to certain people, amen, that you don't know. Your root, amen, is connected to Nigeria. That's the point that I'm making. That's the things of the spirit. We are all connected, amen, in one way or the other in the spirit. Nobody is an island. The body is made up of many members. There are part of you, amen, that is Nigeria. There are part of you, amen, that expresses grace and gift from others that you may never know. But hopefully one day, amen, we will all have, amen, this connection. Because God, you know, I made a, I made a prophetic word. I gave a prophetic word to my people when I was leaving them in Nigeria. I said, I pray that a day will come. God will allow us all to converge in a place. Back in those days, there was, there was internet, but there was nothing like social media. There was nothing like Facebook. There was nothing like, you know, you know Zoom today. Today we've got Zoom. We've got all, we, we've got, you know, uh, 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 you know, team. We've got all of these, you know, networks that you can connect. Guess what? When I made that prophetic declaration over 22 years ago, thereabout, or 22, 25 years ago, those things were not there. But I said to them, I said, one day, it's my prayer that we'll all meet. Because it's like... You, this man is just leaving us. But now the table has been set. Now I can plan and say next year I want to host all of the people that have come out of my loins. Wherever they are, join. Give them enough time. Three months preparation. Everybody speak to each other so that everybody amen, can begin to meet each other. It's possible. But when I made that word, it, it never sound like that can ever happen. Are you seeing? God's word has gone ahead of us. Lord, I want to thank you for the people that you have given to me. The people who have laid the foundation from Nigeria, a blessed nation. And the people that I am with, with in this nation are wonderful, wonderful people. Every one of them, they've all become part and parcel of my life. I love them all. And those, my followers from America, from other parts of the world, I've got people following me from America. I've got, you know, 54% of people following me from America. I don't even know them. But they're following. They're listening. Yes, because they can feel the authenticity of what I'm talking about. They can hear from my voice. You know, when somebody is lying to you, you can pick it. When somebody is speaking from the heart, you can, you can pick it. I'm speaking from the heart. I don't lie to people. Well, there's no need to lie because at the end of the day, it is God that will sanction the word. Every word you proclaim, if it's true or, or lie, guess what? God will have to sanction it. If, if, if God sanctioned that word, then it's true. If nothing happens, then you know you've, you've not said the truth. So it's always important to speak from the heart, to speak the truth. And say the way God will have you say it. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of people. That's why God has given us the prophetic. The prophetic has no boundary. 
The prophetic cannot be stopped, cannot be hindered. The prophetic cannot be, cannot be, you know, cannot be quenched. You can't quench the fire. So, Father, I thank you for these wonderful brethren. But I also thank you for a nation that have birthed so many vessels, so many instruments, Nigeria. Lord, I thank you that this is not a day to feel sad about that nation, but this is a day of joy. We celebrate the future. We celebrate your voice. We celebrate your counsel. We celebrate your eternal purposes, O oh God, that is being awakened today. In this new day, Father, we thank you for a nation like Nigeria that is rising up once again in the power of truth. Every high places, yes, the men have built, every idea, every spirit of Jezebel, the high places, the powers, the forces of Ahab, we proclaim them, O oh God, to come to an end. We declare in the name of Jesus that there is a new day. There's a new, there's a new day. There's a new horizon upon that nation. Your hand this day is resting upon that nation. And we proclaim the prophetic counsels of God to begin to shake the very foundation of that nation. That everything that is not of God, let it collapse. Let a new day arise. Let a new voice arise from Nigeria. Let your name, O oh God, be hallowed once again. We love that nation. I love that nation. Because that nation made me, trained me. Beautiful people, wonderful people, people of great grace, people, yes, of love, of honor, people of great respect, people of substance, people of God with depth. Some of the most mature spiritual people I know, I've met them from Nigeria. Some of them I've never even met physically, but just following them, hearing them, their life has been a blessing to me. And so I thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Continue to release the stream, the water of this great nation, oh God, across the land, across the board, across the nation. Maybe a nation that people will look back to, oh God, with love and mercy. Thank you, Father, for healing that nation. Thank you, Lord, that the people that are there who have felt hopeless, tired, discouraged, thank you this day that their hands are strengthened, that they will no longer feel discouraged, that they will no longer feel divided, feel alone. Father, send help, O oh God, from Zion. Send help to them, O oh God. Reach them wherever they are this morning. Empower them. Endow them, O oh God. Awaken them, O oh God. Renew them. Revive them, O oh God. Restore them, O oh God. Restore your glory and your presence, O oh God. May your blessing, O oh God, be upon the land. May your blessing be upon Nigeria this morning. Lord, I thank you as my brethren here in South Africa join faith with me. We proclaim your blessing. We proclaim, oh God, newness, oh God. We proclaim your mercy. We proclaim, oh God, your power upon the land. We proclaim, oh God, a new prophetic voice. Let it begin to awake a people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus every counsel in Asherok that is not of your will, that's not of your counsel. We declare them right now. Nullify the counsels, oh God. God. Yes, of the cabal. We declare that in the name of Jesus that they come down. The higher places, the ungodliness, corruption, perversion, wickedness in the name of Jesus. Terrorism. We come against Islamic terrorism. We proclaim and we declare you shall proceed no further. We thank you, Father, for institutions right now that you're building, oh God, upon the land. We thank you, oh God, for restoring, for reviving, for empowering, oh God, men and women to take their place, oh God. Restoring, yes, the four corners of that nation. We thank you, oh God, yes, from the health sector to the economy, Father, to governance, to leadership, oh God, in politics. We thank you for a change. Thank you, Lord, for revamping, oh God, yes, every sector, the manufacturing sector. We thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, oh God, for, yes, the research and development sector that you are reviving. Thank you, oh God, for our youth, the education once again that is being empowered and being rebuilt to the glory of your name. We thank you, oh God, for your blessing upon the land. Thank you, Father, for, yes, testimony that are coming out of this brand new day. We declare South Africa, South Africa arise. Let other nations arise and begin to be a blessing to this great nation, Nigeria. Father, we thank you. As we, as we bless Nigeria, we bless this nation of South Africa. We bless the people. 
We bless your voice in this land. We proclaim and we declare your grace and your goodness upon this land, oh God. Yes, Father, enter into a new dimension. Thank you, Father, for empowering. Thank you for a new sense of engagement. Thank you, Father, for renewal. Thank you, Father, for a blessed nation like this, oh God, rising from our past, oh God, entering into the new reality of that which you have prophetically ordained and desire and designed for her. Lord, I thank you that this nation, oh God, will fulfill a prophetic destiny. The nation, this nation, the youth of this land, oh God, will not die without fulfilling their purpose. Yes, Father, the, 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 the growing children, the yet unborn in the name of Jesus, they will meet a land, yes, that carries, that reflects your glory, your blessing, your favor, your goodness in the name of Jesus. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge and understanding, counsel, might and power that is released upon this land. As we bless this nation, Lord, we bless, yes, Zimbabwe. We bless in the name of Jesus, Malawi. We bless Botswana. We bless Angola. Angola in the name of Jesus. We bless Namibia in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the great people, oh God, of the Sadek region, oh God. Thank you. Some of these people, oh God, that are following me, thank you for your blessing, your goodness and grace upon their land. We speak, oh God, transformation upon, yes, the landscape of Africa. We proclaim and declare, let the voice of God arise upon the nation. Let the will of God, yes, begin to take place upon the nations. In the name of Jesus, we declare this day that the will of God is established over Malawi. We pray for you, Malawi. Rise up. Break forth. Shine forth the glory of God. We speak life to your economy. In the name of Jesus, we declare, yes, we proclaim the blessings of God up upon you this day in the name of Jesus. As a name that is coming to my mind, but I can't get it on my lips. Lesotho. Thank you, Father, for Lesotho. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for that. It's such a small nation, but yet powerful, unique in, in our own right. Father, we thank you for Lusoto. We bless you. We thank you for your mighty hand and grace, oh God, upon that nation. We release your blessing upon that land. We thank you for your goodness, of oh God, upon Lusoto. We thank you for men and women that you are raising, oh God, a voice, a prophetic voice rising from Lusoto in the name of Jesus. That's a horn, a horn, a horn in Africa rising, a horn in Sadek region rising up in the name of Jesus. We proclaim and we declare the blessings of God upon you, Lusoto, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm picking something in the spirit for Lesotho. I'm not sure if they're trying to find, you know, uh, uh, natural resources, but I, I, I pick that <laughs> natural gas is going to be found in Lesotho. Now, I, I, I don't usually make this kind of pronouncement, but I'm just speaking that very soon they're going to find natural gas. I don't know if it's already done, but I'm picking this in my spirit. Natural gas will be found in Lesotho. Lesotho. Natural gas. And it's going to change. It's going to change the landscape of that nation. But guess what? As, as prophetic people, we need to begin to pray for that nation. We need to begin to set things in place. We need to begin. I know that Lesotho is just known for water. I know that, I mean, I know they supply South African water. But natural gas, I'm not sure about that. But I'm picking that in my spirit. You know, the, 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 the name was in my mind, but I couldn't, I was struggling getting out of, out, of my, out of my lips. But I think I've picked it. Yes. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what we have picked in the spirit. We release it in the name of Jesus for the beneficiation of the people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Listen, friends, everywhere, you know, mineral resources have been found in Africa. What we've seen, amen, is devastation, division, destruction, war, and all of this carnage, just like we've seen right now going on in, 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 uh, in uh, Mozambique. But we declare it shall not be so. This is the time, Lord, for Africa. And we know that, oh God, for Africa to rise up, we need quality men. We need quality leaders. So we thank you, Father, right now for, yes, understanding. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for grace. We thank you for the impartation of your spirit. Raising, yes, oh God, visionary leaders for Lesotho as you're doing, oh God, right now in South Africa, oh God, yes, in Mozambique, in Zimbabwe, in the name of Jesus, in Angola, in the name of Jesus. In Namibia, we proclaim it, O oh God. In the entire Sadek region, we proclaim godly leaders rise up in the name of Jesus. Technocrats, God-fearing leaders, as we have seen, O oh God, yes, in, uh, uh, um, in Malawi. Recently, we know the leader there is a godly man. But we pray that his godliness will be mingled, yes, with technocrat spirit. 
give him wisdom, give him knowledge. Give him understanding. As we pray for him, we use him as a point of contact, oh God, to pray for our, our president, Cyril Maposa. We pray. We know he's got a desire, yes, to see this nation rise. But we also know that he had to, he had, he had to deal with all kinds of forces, all kinds of forces. But in the name of Jesus, we declare, oh God, they will not overpower him. We say the council of Aitofe over South Africa shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. This nation will rise up. This nation will fulfill a prophetic purpose. We declare in the name of Jesus. As God healed this nation. Yes, God will begin to heal our economy. Yes, as the prophet of God says, get me. Yes, a new bowl. <laughs> a new bowl with salt. And he went to locate the source. Yes, the source of the economy of the land. They said, the land is good, but the water is bitter. The water has been polluted. The prophet of the Lord said, get me a new bowl and salt. And he spoke the word of the Lord. Yes to that source. He said you are healed in the name of Jesus. There are people that have polluted the source. There are people polluting. There are systems polluting the economic source of this nation. I just speak that in my spirit. In the name of Jesus we rise this day. And we locate them, Father. They are the prophetic injunction. We declare that their counsel is neutralized. The counsels of Aitofe, the counsels of the wicked one, the counsels of the Kabar, the counsels of ungodly, yes, poli po political system. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are, wherever they are, in, 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 in the financial institution, wherever they are outside this country, wherever they are in politics, Father, we neutralize their power. We declare, Lord, they will, be, they will be found and they will be arrested in the name of Jesus. This nation will fulfill a prophetic destiny. We thank you, Father, for this, for this land. Yes, we ask for your reign. That's what we are looking for. That's what we are hearing now. The Bible says Elijah climbed up the second time. Karabasiam. Elijah climbed up after he had judged. The prophets of Baal, he climbed up the second time. Because now he have to engage heaven for the economy of the land to be restored. Oh, Spirit of God. Father, we climb up the second time. And he had to engage heaven seven times. You've given, this, you've given me this word for a while now. And we're looking at it. He said, I see. He came, he said, I see. A cloud being formed like the hand of a man rising from the sea. As a prophetic word we are tracking. Father, we thank you for the formation of a new company of leaders, of a new company of authority, of a new company of men and women that will govern in righteousness. That will govern, oh God, with justice and equity. That will govern with truth. Let them begin to rise from among men. Every priest is taken from among men. We thank you, God, that as we begin to see the restoration of the, of the altar and the horns begin to shoot forth in the name of Jesus at the four edges, at the four corners of the altar, we proclaim a new day of authority is rising. Is rising. Father, we rise against the horns of the wicked. We rise. It was David that said. My horn shall be anointed with a fresh horn. My horn shall be anointed with a fresh oil. Father, we proclaim this day. Anoint the horn that are rising, O God, with a fresh power, with a fresh sense of vigor, with a fresh, fresh insight, with a new sense, O God, of innovation, capacity, governance, authority, administrative spirit in the name of Jesus. We proclaim it. Let it rise up, O God. We speak it into every dimension of this land, across this nation, O God. All the way, O God. Yes, Father, to Nigeria, to Ghana, to Cameroon, in the name of Jesus, to Ivory Coast, to Liberia, in the name of Jesus, to, to, to Libya, yes, in the name of Jesus, to Niger Republic, in the name of Jesus. We speak in the name of Jesus, to Chad Republic, in the name of Jesus. We proclaim, O God, let a new voice of apostolic people begin to emerge all across the continent of Africa. We take our place. We refuse to die. We refuse to go into oblivion in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I thank you. 
receive grace this day. In your workplace, in your ministry, in your calling, I declare a new horn is rising. Let it rise. Let, the, let there be a formation of the cloud of God. Let the cloud continue to form. Yes, the sound of abundance of rain is coming. The sound of abundance of rain. Come on, do you hear the sound? The sound of abundance of rain. A formation of a cloud like the hand of a man. Like a hand of a man. Like the hand of a man. Like the hand of a man. The feast of the Lord. This is the day of the feast of the Lord. Zilababa shatata zupravana acceleration into the position of authority, governmental authority in the name of Jesus. Capacity to break barriers, limitations. No more fear. Voice to proclaim and to declare. Voice to bring baraka upon the land. Oh. Salabaye. Baba. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We honor you this day. We rejoice in you. We thank you. We'll see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We will eat the fruit of our lips. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you once again, Father, for Nigeria. Thank you, Father, for the beautiful nation. As a celebrate this day of independence. May it truly be a day of independence. May people begin to think independently. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for a new political landscape. Yes. Thank you, Father, for a new spiritual landscape. Thank you, Father, for a new economic landscape. Thank you, Father. A new sense of leaders emerging. Hallelujah. Honor and praise to you. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of today's live broadcast. I want to thank God for how the Spirit of God once again has led us. If there's anything we've received this morning, amen, is that we're challenged to become visionary missionaries. Visionary missionaries. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's become visionary missionaries. Amen. Let's see beyond our 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 place, our border, our geography. Let's 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 dive into what God is doing in other places. Amen. Let's let's make our own findings. Let's 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 be a blessing to nations, but let's also, amen, care for nations. You know, nations are people. And that's how it is. So once again, I thank you for supporting. This, uh, this uh, um, broadcast this morning. Thank you for joining me. Right. I see uh, uh, Apostle uh, Andrew Johnson. Thank you, sir, for joining this morning. It's nice to have you connect with us this morning. Thank you. I hope you're doing well with the family and the tribe. Please do send my love to your tribe. It's nice to have you join. Thank you, my dear sister and Kumisa. I really appreciate your love with the love of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Mervyn. Thank you for those words. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I really, really do appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, my dear sister Florence. Nice to have you join. Thank you so, so very much. God bless you. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Roderick, thank you, sister Diony. Really appreciate it. Thank you all. God bless you. Yes. Yes. I'm just trying to read what Brother Melvin says. Bless is the womb that brought you forth. Amen. And the shift in South Africa. Thank you so very much, Brother Melvin, for those words. All right. Every one of you, have yourself a blessed, wonderful day. It's raining and windy here in, uh, 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 in, in Franjouk, of course. Western Cape is raining here. And in fact, I, I thought I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to make it this morning because it was quite windy, you know. But I just said, well, I need to be here. So thank you all. Really uh, uh, had a wonderful time this morning. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Make sure you keep yourself warm, all right? If it's raining at your end, 
God bless you. Hope to see you. I'm still writing. I'm still writing. Please continue to pray for me. I got some beautiful uh, uh, concepts yesterday. And uh, I'm thinking I need to stop writing because, you see, like I said, writing and also broadcasting don't seem to go together with me. But anyhow, we'll see how it goes. So please continue to pray that God will give me more dimensions of visions and revelation and inspiration. Thank you. Love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day.